Hello guys, welcome to my educational channel Gravity Tech. In this video, I will help you out with some concepts on sets, functions and relations, recurrence relations, probability distribution, that is normal probability distribution and binomial probability distribution. If you like the video, click the like button and subscribe to the channel so that I will help you with the next topics as well. Let's see now. So the first is find the roots of the recurrence relation a n minus 6 a n minus 1 and 10 plus 10 a n minus 2. Right. Now how to solve this? I'll just help you out with how exactly you can solve this. Okay. Now if you look at this. Right. See the very first thing what you need to do. You need to first convert the recurrence relation into the characteristic equation so in this case recurrence relation is what 10 a n minus 2 is equal to 0 right so what will be the characteristic polynomial for this so there are three terms so x square correct maximum is n n minus 1 n minus 2 so the list will be what x to 0 so this is 10 this will be 6x and this will be what x square. So x square minus 6x plus 10 is equal to 0. This is what your characteristic problem. Now you need to basically solve this. How do we solve this? You can, we know the formula, right? x is equal to what? Minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4ac upon twice a right now what is a here so here a is equal to 1 b is equal to minus 6 and c is equal to what 10 correct so if we calculate b square minus 4 ac here it will be what minus 6 square into 4 into a is 1 and c is 10 so this is 6 square is 36 minus 40. That is what minus 4. So x will be what minus b plus or minus. Let's say instead of minus b we can just have it the values actual values. Okay see so actual value will be what here. The b value is minus minus plus 6 plus or minus under root minus 4 i minus 4 not i okay it is actually minus 4 yeah and upon twice a that is a is 1 so 2 so if you just take out 6 plus or minus see the square root of 4 is what 2 and under root minus 1 is i. This is a complex number. So i upon 2. So 2 3s are 6. 2 1s are 1. So 3 plus or minus i is going to be what? So the roots of this equation is what? x is equal to 3 plus i and 3 minus i. So this is how you can basically solve this one. Okay. This is the first one. Maybe some sometimes they make a printing mistake, right? So, so that's the one thing. Let's look at the second one. So the next one is a discrete probability distribution is given by the formula table. This is the formula table given by find the value of the mean. Now, see, remember, very first thing the mean is what like this if this is a probability distribution then mean is denoted by e of x right and how it is basically calculated it is basically what summation of this is e e of x summation of what x size into p of x size 
means what will be here? Answer will be what? Like 1 into 0.35 plus 2 into 0.20 plus 3 into 0.45. So, it will be what? It is simple, right? 1 into 0.35 plus 2 into 0.40 plus 3 into 0.45. So, what will be the answer? 1 into 0.35 is 0.35 plus 2 into 0.40 is 0.80. 3 into 0.45 is what? 3 fives are 15, 3 fours are 12 and 13. 1.35. So, what is the answer? The addition of all 3? 5, 5, 0. Correct. 3 and 3, 6. 5, 5 is 10. 3 and 3, 6 and 7. 7 and 8, 15. 1. Right. 1 and 1, 2. Right. So, for this, the mean will be what? 2.50. You may have the different different values here, right? The figures, you just need to che uh, check and maybe solve accordingly. Right? This is how you can basically solve the example of mean of the probability distribution. Now, what is the next question we have? A discrete probability distribution is given by the following table. See, what, what is the value of k now? See, simply, what did we saw? The mean is what? This into, so that was one thing, right? This is a mean. But here, this probability, this whole addition, this plus this plus this plus this is one. Always remember. Okay. Now, if you look at here, right? 0 0.35 plus 0 0.20. How much? 55 50 applies plus 0.45 this is one so this is how all the probabilities distributions basically sum to what one correct so if you basically try to solve this how this will be okay so 7k plus 3k plus 5k plus 7k is equal to what one so 7 and 3 10 5 and 3 12 10 and 12 22 Right, 22k is equal to 1. So, what is the value of k? k is what? 1 upon 22. Okay. So, this is how you can find out the value of k. Yeah. Now, the next question. Now, what are the properties of binomial distribution? Just remember, what are the properties of binomial distribution? So, for binomial distribution, expected mean is what? E of x. N into P. Right. N means number of trials and P means number of successes. Variance of a binomial theorem is always var of x is what? NPQ. See, expected mean is what? ENP. E mean is NP for binomial distribution, whereas variance is NPQ. Variance is NPQ. And P plus Q gives us 1, where Q is the failure. Failure probability, whereas P is a success probability. And failure plus success probability gives us 1. When n is large and p is small, then it is a poison distribution. Okay, when n is large and p is small, then it is poison distribution. But when is n, n is large and p is near to 0.5, then it is a normal distribution. And when n is large and p is greater than 0.5, then it is a positively skewed. Right. So, what exactly we have here? Uh, so, binomial distribution is basically what? Remember, these are the things you will be applying into the formula. So, n into p. Variance of x is what? npq. Whereas, n is large. And, if p is very small, then it is a Poison ratio, right? If P is what? A greater, then it is a skewed, right? And then if it is P is nearly 0.5, then it is a normal. Yeah? Easy? Yeah. Now let's see what is next. Now they are saying find the roots of the recurrence relation. This we have already seen, right? How to find out. But still, I will maybe help you out to find out the roots of this. 
not always roots actually come complex right now here the recurrence relation is given is what a n minus 8 a n minus 1 plus 16 a n minus 2 0 what does that mean characteristic polynomial will be what x square 8 x plus 16 is equal to 0 if you solve this it will be what x square minus 4 x minus 4 x plus 16 is equal to 0 so if you just maybe have this we write x minus 4 minus 4 x minus 4 is equal to 0 so these two are common so x minus 4 and x minus 4 is equal to 0 so x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 4 so this has a double root 4 because there are two roots right so similarly if you let's say here if you have here 8x and if you have here 15 so what will be the roots it will be simply here like 5x 3x right and then here 15 so roots would be what 5 and 3 so the recurrence relation roots would be what 5 and 3 so it depends on what exactly the values these values are there understood yeah let's see what is it so next is if yes if yes and t are the real and distinct roots of and root of a characteristic polynomial rather than equation of a recurrence relation then what is the general solution of the recurrence relation see this is a formula remember this is a formula i'll tell you what it is right so if yes and t are distinct roots distinct means the different roots of the characteristic polynomial means what it will basically be a recurrence relation will be what like this so characteristic polynomial will be what x square minus s plus t x plus s t is equal to zero but these are the roots what do we call it as a roots but general solution right general solution of this recurrence relation like a n minus s plus t a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 right s t what it is general yes so general solution is like this okay so it would be a s raised to n plus b t raised to n so if you think yes t are the small then f a s raised to n plus b t raised to n this is the general solution of this kind of recursion relation right with s and t are the roots understood hopefully right now let's look at what is the next we have yeah then now they are saying a relation there is a set 1 2 3 and r is the relation defined by 1 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 check if the relation is reflexive symmetric and transitive see now what does it mean so here they have given a set 1 2 3 now r is also given 1 1 1 2 2 2 and 2 3 see now the relation is reflexive symmetric or transitive what does it mean by reflexive what does it mean by reflexive reflexive means same see now how to read this one relates to one one relates to two two relates to two and two three relates to three that's how we read it so reflexive means what every element relates to 
itself. If that's the case, then it's reflexive. Now, how many elements we have here? One, two, three. Is one relates to one? Yes. Is two relates to two? Yes. Is three relates to three? Yes. So this is reflexive. This is reflexive for sure, right? So this is reflexive. That is one thing. Now, let's look at the second part, whether it is symmetric or not, right? Now, what does it mean by symmetric? Symmetric means if A relates to B, right? That means if one relates to two, then two should also relate to one. Then it is a symmetric, right? Now let's see here. Here one relates to two, but is there any element where it says two relates to one? No, there is no two one. That means this is not symmetric. So it is reflexive, but not symmetric. And transitive means what? One. So let's say A relates to B and B also relates to C. This implies A relates to C. Then it's a transitive. Now in this case, let's say one relates to two. Correct. Now two relates to. There is nothing else, right? Two relates to himself. So this is, will not be a transitive two. Not transitive. So this is only reflexive. This is only reflexive. Remember. So that's how you can basically have it. Find out whether it is a reflexive, transitive, or symmetric. Okay. On the so when it is reflexive, if the element relates to himself or itself, right? When it is symmetric, if A relates to B, B also relates to A. And when it is tra transitive. If A relates to B, B relates to C, then A also relates to C. That means transitivity. Let's see. Now look at. Uh, remember the the way we saw the characteristics of binomial distribution. There are some characteristics of normal distribution as well. All the normal curves are actually bell shaped with the point of inflection that is mu plus sigma or minus. The area under the entire curve is always one. The mean, mode, and median are all equal. All the normal curves are basically symmetric about the mean. Remember, okay. Now, what do we have next? I think this first thing we have already done. Find the roots of the recurrence relation a n minus a n minus one at minus six. This is pretty easy. When you say a n minus a n minus one plus six a n minus two zero, that means what? It would be x square minus x plus 6 is equal to 0 so it will be what x minus 3 or x plus 3 x minus 2 is equal to 0 so x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to 2 you need to basically factorize this if you cannot factorize use the formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4 ac upon twice a. it will also give you the same answer okay that's the one thing now Let's look at the second one. What they have? They are saying now this the next one is on the sets. Okay, so next one is on the sets. What they are saying? Suppose 200 students are participating in the long jump. Okay, so long jump. Let's say A is the event of supporting the long jump. So that may be 200. Now long jump. And running, okay. Long jump and running. Sorry. So what exactly it is? Let's say long jump and running. So let's say A is for long jump event, and B is the one which tells number of students participated in or what running. Correct. So here. Only long jump are given 100. So 100 are only participated in long jump, whereas in only running 200 or oh, 500 participated. Right. And 200 participated in long jump and running. So 
A intersection B, that is 200. Now they want us to find out the total number of students altogether. That means we need to find out A union of B. Now we know the formula number of elements in A, number of elements in B minus number of elements in A intersection B. So number of elements in A is 100, number of elements in B is 500 and number of elements in A intersection B is what 200. So this is 600 minus 200 is what 400. So 400 students basically are there in total. Okay, that's what the calculation is. Okay, now let's look at the next one. So the next one says a random variable x takes the value 0, 1, 2. Okay, x basically takes the value 0, 1, 2. And if p of x is equal to 0, p of x is equal to 1 and p of x is equal to 2, all are 0 0.23, 33. Then what will be mean? See, it's easy. So, what it will be, you should be basically able to first find out, right, how it is. So, you can basically put it into the box like this. The way we always do it, correct? So, like this. Here it will be x. Here it will be p of x, correct? So, the values of x are 0, 1 and 2, correct? And everything is 0 0.33 and 0 0.33. Now we know that mean will be what? This into this plus this into this plus this into this. So 0 into 0 0.33 plus 1 into 0 0.33 plus 2 into 0 0.33. So this is 0. This is 0 0.33. And this is 0 0.66. So what does that mean? The total is what? 0 0.99. Correct. So the mean is what? 0 0.99. Easy. Yeah. Let's look at the next one. So what exactly they are next? They are saying the set A element has M elements and B has N elements. So this is a concept maybe I'm talking about here. Okay. Maybe this concept will help you out somewhere. But the concept is this. Okay, what the concept is? The concept says if the element A has M elements, the, uh, if a set A has M elements and the B has N elements, the number of functions possible from A to B is N raised to M. So let's say A is a set and B is a set. A has N, yeah, A has M elements, right? And then B has N elements, right? Now, basically, the functions from A to B will be what? M raised to N. Now, let's say in this case, if number of elements in A are 3 and number of elements in B are 4, then in that case, number of functions from a to B will be what? 3 raised to 4. That is what? 81. So they might give you the different way. They will say like 81 are the total number of functions possible from A to B and B has 4 elements, right? Then how many elements are there in the A? Then what you should basically do? Let A has X elements, right? So X raised to 4 will be what? 81. So X raised to 4 will be what? 3 raised to 4. 4, 4 gets down and x is equal to what? 3. So you should be able to basically find out this way as well. Okay. So that's how it is. Let's look at the next question what we have. Okay. See, so here it should be m raised to n because a has the m elements and b has n elements. So, this should be m raised to n, not n raised to m. Okay. So, now in this case, a has 3 elements, b has 4. So, a to b is what? 3 raised to 4. Next, solution of the recurrence relation. Now, this is a solution, not the roots. There are two things to remember. Roots are the, basically we find out the characteristic polynomial and then find out the root and here it is the solution of the recurrence relation. So, what it is. See, now 
if we know that if okay if a recurrence relation has the roots a and b then its general solution is basically a raised to right like this a raised to n plus b and b raised to n but where a and b are the roots of the characteristic polynomial now in this case they are given a n a n minus 1 6 a n minus 2 is equal to 0 so the characteristic polynomial will be x square minus x plus 6 is equal to what 0 so the roots of this will be what x minus 3 and so what it will be right 3 x minus 2 will it be no so 6 is what we can say 3 into 2 but we need a positive and then the roots cannot be looks like this will not have the real roots right let's maybe try to find out now this will have a complex roots now how the complex roots will be okay we find out b square minus 4 ac correct so what will be b square minus 4 is here minus 1 square minus 4 into 1 into 6 correct so 1 minus 24 that is minus 23 right so the roots like x is equal to what 1 plus under root 23i upon 2 and x is equal to what 1 minus under root 23i upon 2 so the solution will be what so the solution will be what capital a 1 plus 23 i upon 2 raised to n plus b 1 minus root 23 upon 2 raised to n but let's say instead of this if they give a equation instead of this if they give a equation like this right if the equation is assume it is maybe a n minus a n minus 1 and minus 6 a n minus 2 is equal to 0 in that case the characteristic polynomial will be x square minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 that means x minus 3 x plus 2 is equal to 0 so the values of x is what 3 and minus 2 so the solution will be what for this a and 3 raised to n plus b minus 2 raised to n remember right somehow i got the example of complex roots that's why we had to follow this discriminant method okay let's look at now what we have as a next right so the next is let a is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and r is the relation defined by what y is equal to 3x then the total number of elements in the relation r is what it's easy see what it will be now they are saying r is the relation defined right now from a to a they have given a is what 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 now they want us to define a relation from a to a such that the y is what thrice of the first element so let's take one by one if you take one y is equal to 3x so 1 into 3 is 3 let's take 2 now 2 into 3 6 let's take 3 now 3 into 3 9 let's take 4 now so 4 into 3 is what 12 but is there a 12 here no so no so this is the only like this is the only thing will come right so r has how many elements three elements right because they had y is equal to what 3x as a function defined so whatever function they have defined maybe we should basically consider that 
yeah so that was the one let's look at what we have next yeah yeah now next they are saying a discrete probability distribution is given by this formula 1.3 2.4 3.3 the value of e x cube it's it's so easy right see x cube you just need to cube the x how do we find out e multiply this into this this into this this into this now before that before multiplying not x what they are saying x cube so we will first cube this and then multiply right so how it will be see so we want x cube and probability of x so x cube will be what 1 2 cube is 8 3 cube is what 27 correct and then this is 0.3 this is 0.4 and this is 0.3 multiply these two the multiplication is 0.3 this multiplication reward 3.2 and this multiplication will be what 3 7s are 21 3 2s are 6 6 and 2 8 so addition of this 3 so this is going to be what 1 3.6 8 and 3 11 11.6 is what e of x cube correct so if you want x square you need to square it if there is x raised to 4 you need to raise to 4 you need to do okay this is how it is so this is how you can solve it let's look at the next example what we have Yes, if a person, okay, all, all of the things came, right? If a person bets on each horse of the seven horses, what are the total ways in which the horse reaches to the final line so that to lose all the bets? It's easy. It is basically just, it's seven horses, so seven factorial is the answer. And what is the seven factorial? 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 into 7. I know this is 6 into 20 into what? 42. So this is 120 into 42. So 120 into 42, how much? Right? 2 zeros are 0, 2 2s are 4, 2 1s are 2. Nothing. 4 zeros are 0, 4 2s are 8, 4 1s are 4. So 0, 4, 0 and 5, 0, 4, 0. So 5, 0, 4, are, zeros are the total ways to lose all the weights. You see? Let's look at the next example now. If that is you forget about this late, if f of x is equal to tan x and g of x is equal to sec x, then composition of function f on g is what? See, it's easy. Now composition of function means what? If you say if I say 2 and 3 are the two numbers, what is the composition of 2 and 3? You will just simply multiply and say 6. Correct? Similarly, when you say f of x is equal to tan x and g of x is equal to what? say x we need to find a composition of this this is what we call it as f of g of x correct so f of what is g of x say x so instead of gx we will have a sec x if f of x is equal to tan x so f of sec x will be what tan of sec of x remember so f of g of x means what replace this x with sec x is it and if they ask g on f, then it will be what? g of f of x means what? Replace this x with the tan x. So it will be what? sec x sec of tan of x. Is he? So that depends on whether they are asking f on g or g on f. Yeah. So the two different things. Okay. Now let's look at the next example. What we have.
so if so explain non reflexive non symmetric and non transitive see we already discussed this right non reflexive means a not not every element will basically be a relating to a same element so the relation will not have a element will not be have a relation with the same element at that time it is called as a non reflexive that is also called as irre irreflexive non symmetric when a relates to b and b doesn't relate to a then it is a non symmetric and transit non transitive means where a relates to b b relates to c but a doesn't relate to c then it is called as a tra non transitive relation right okay then there are six objects are to be given to six different people what are the total ways to do this so that one object is delivered to the right person right since it is six and six it should basically simply what six factorial okay and then we know right how to find out the six factorial one into two into three into four into five so this is six this is 20 and this is six so this is 120 into six so 720 so total 720 ways right yeah let's now find out the next one if b is this minus 1 1 0 2 minus 2 and f is from b to r see if they are saying r r means real numbers from b from here to real numbers then the function defined f of x is what x square minus 3 the function is what x square minus 3 then what is the range of the function range means what the only images of these numbers means you will put these numbers into this and whatever numbers come right that will only be the range now in this case we will try to find out the range let's see so what they have given is this is your b minus 1 1 0 2 minus 2 and f of x is what x square minus 3 so let's take first minus 1 so when you take minus 1 what it will be minus 1 square minus 3 that is 1 minus 3 that is minus 2 let's take now 1 if you take 1 1 square minus 3 again minus 2 let's take 0 if you take 0 0 square minus 3 that is minus 3 let's take 2 so 2 square 4 4 minus 3 is 1 let's take minus 2 so minus 2 square minus 3 again 4 minus 3 is what 1 so minus 2 minus 2 minus 3 1 and 1 right so the range the range will have minus 2 minus 2 minus 3 1 and 1 but in a set when we write we don't repeat the numbers so the range is what minus 2 minus 3 and 1 so ultimately to find out the range you need to put 1 by 1 elements right in the given function and whatever the values come put those things into the set and remove the repeated elements that will be your range understood hopefully this helps Right now, let's see what exactly we have next. Right. So, if we go to the next, let me rub this out first and then we'll go back to the next part. Yeah. So, properties of power set of A, remember. Okay, properties of power set of A. Power set of A is denoted by power of A. And then power set of A is a superset of all relations from A to A. So if number of elements in A are M, then number of elements in power of A are what? 2 raised to M. Right, maybe give you an example. So let's say A is a set 1, 2. Then what will be the subsets of A? Subsets will be what? empty set itself 1 and 2 and power set means what power set means 
set of all subsets set of all subsets remember so therefore for a power set will have four elements correct the number of elements in power set are let's say number of elements in power set are four similarly if there are three right so there will be like eight eight, eight such elements so number of elements in a set a and number of elements in power set a are actually related by 2 raised to power right okay so in case if number of elements in a are 3 then number of elements in power of a will be what 2 q that is 8 if this is 4 then this will have 2 raised to 4 if this is 6 this will have 2 raised to 6 elements remember that's what the property of power set is okay now let's look at the next one properties of bijective functions bijective functions means what each element of domain must be mapped to the at least one element of the codomain. Now, what is the domain and codomain? You must have seen such a figures, right? See, now let me just maybe rub this out and then I will try to help you out, right? What exactly the function means. So, see if this is a function. This kind of diagram you might have seen it earlier. A to B. Then this is called as a domain. What do we call it as a domain? This is called as a codomain. And inside that there is a range. Right. Now let's say if you have some elements here. And if you also have some elements here. So this is called as a one to one mapping one element to one okay and if it is same the reverse way and then this is equal to the range then this is on to a as well so bijective function is always one one and on to remember so bijective function is what always one one and on to okay let's go to the next question Okay, let's go to the next question. Yeah, if a book has 30 pages numbered from 1 to 30, one page is selected at random. Uh, let A be the event that page number selected is multiple of 4 and B is the event of multiple uh, page number selected is multiple of 10. Then possible events that have the selected page number multiples of 4 and 5. How many? See, it's easy. So basically, there is a book. What do we have? A book, right? Uh, pain. Yeah. So there is a book we have. So the sample space will have 1, 2, 3, Four, up to 30 numbers correct page numbers are there now they are saying a is the event which basically is an event that the page number which you selected is a multiple of 4 that means it will have 4 8 12 16 20 24 and 28 numbers correct in that now what they have in b what they are saying, if the B is the event that page number is selected is being what? Multiple of 10. So, multiple of 10 means what? 10, 20 and 30. Correct? We need to select the numbers from here only. Right? Now, then the possible events that have selected page number multiple of 4 or 5. Now, they are saying it should be 4 or 5. That's fine. Now, 4 or 5 means what? It is basically a union. What it is? Union. Union means A and B together. A and B 
together. So it should be what? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. 10 is already, no, no, 10 is not there. But 20 already covered here. So we don't need to repeat it. And then 30. So you need to combine both the elements. That gives a or. If they have asked for and. If they have asked A and B, then only a common element. So, A and B means this common element. Remember. Okay. So, that's how this one is, right? Let's go to the next one. Hopefully, this helps you to understand how the things work on sets and other stuff, right? The intention is that you understand the concept and then in case of any kind of example you encounter in future, you basically be able to solve that example on your own. Let's look at the next one. Remember the rook polynomials. Now what is a rook? Right. You must have played the chase. Correct. Now in a chase board, rook is what maybe uh, like this, right? Uh, what we call it in Hindi is maybe or in our local language Hathi right so the rook polynomial is basically putting a rook at a certain at a place so that it will not be attacking right so the chase board can be of one by one right the chase board can be of what two by two a chase board can be of what three by three right a chase board can be of 4 by 4 and so on. So there are some rook polynomials which basically tells if it is 1 by 1, the rook polynomial will be what? x plus 1. If it is 2 by 2, it is 2x square plus 4x plus 1. Whereas if it is 3 by 3, it is 6x cube plus 18x square plus 9x plus 1. If it is 4 by 4, 24x raised to 4, 96x raised to cube, plus 72x square, plus 16x plus 1. And there is a big formula actually behind it to form, uh, find out it. Okay. So that is easy. Yeah. Now let's look at what is the next. Right. See, as long as you know the concepts, you can easily solve any kind of example. But if you do not know the concepts, you won't be able to solve it. Yeah. So let's maybe look at the next part. Yeah. So that's all actually. I had it from this video. Uh, if you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel so that I will basically help you out with the new videos too. And like the video. So. I wish you happy learning with the gravity deck. Thank you guys.